On the Tuesday of the Benny's footy trials, Brendan gave us a lift to school. Kylie sat in the back, putting black shit on her eyes. Brendan kept checking her out in the rear vision mirror, a smirk sitting on his lips. You glamming up for someone? No. He gave me a nudge. I shifted across in my seat. Piss off, Brendan, Kylie whined. Can't your uncle ask you a question? Yeah, right. Well, you're a pretty girl. Brendan, don't boys like pretty girls? You tell me. She turned around and leant out the window. If he knew what was good for him, he'd stop now. So, footy trials this arvo? Brendan turned to me. Yeah. You'll be fine, he said. You should start running with me in the mornings. What? Running in the mornings, he repeated. I've just started again. Dunno, I shrugged, contemplating whether a piss off was in order. At least think about it, Brendan said. It's good for the mind, too, being up early, getting in a bit of exercise. My knuckles tapped the inside of the door. And you know where I run? Up the you-know-where. Up the ascent? Yep, Brendan nodded. Knew that'd get you. Right to the top I go. About a kilometre past Grand's place was not a hill but a mountain and a steep one. Grand named it Ascension Hill. She reckoned it led all the way to heaven. We just called it the ascent. When we were kids, Brendan and Pa would take us there for picnics. The old truck Pa called Betsy would jerk and groan up the dirt track, winding its way through the spotted gums, Pa changing to the lowest gear. Almost at the end of the track, the truck would give up. It never made it to the top. Out would all pile, fighting about who'd carry what while Brendan and Pa looked for heavy rocks to lodge behind the back tyres. Come on, Pa would say to us. Who's coming up the ascent? I bet 50 cents Daniel can't go up without a bellyache. It was probably only a 10, 15 minute walk, but Daniel whined the whole way. If it's this hard to get to heaven, Daniel would whisper so Pa didn't hear, I'd rather go to hell. He had a thing about walking uphill. That's the reason we called the hill in our street Daniel's Wine. Walking home from school, Daniel had reached the bottom of the hill, plonk himself down on the curb and say, get mum to pick me up, will you, Tom? So I'd walk up, most days with Finn, and when I'd get home, I'd yell, mum, he's down there, and she'd go and get him. But when Daniel got his car, he fell in love with that hill. Luke and him would fly down, Daniel never letting his foot touch the brake. Brendan pulled up outside Benny's. Start running tomorrow with me. Get fit. I've never seen you so... stationary. You're looking bloody awful. I shut the door of the car. Tom? Brendan called. I kept walking. So what do you reckon? Dad asked me on the way back home from the footy trials. Good turnout, eh? I bet Harvey was pleased. The field's like a cow paddock. I reckon with a bit of practice, Charlie Soup's line-out throw could be okay. It'll never come close to Matt's. Different sort of player, I guess. Good in the tight stuff. You've only seen him play once. Jimmy Rogers is an outside centre for sure, Dad nodded. He's fast. And that Harrigan's gutsy. Harvey says he's perfect for the open side breakaway. And Tonelli's a real ball player. He keeps his cool, I noticed. I couldn't believe Dad's enthusiasm. He had to be putting it on. Harvey says you'll definitely play half back. Good, eh? The hope in his voice lingered in the front seat like question marks jumping all over the dashboard. Hey, that's what you want, isn't it? He squeezed my shoulder. It's a chance, Tommy. I looked away. And Rory played 5-8 last year, Dad kept on. He'll be kept in that position. He can't kick with both feet. Give him time, Dad answered. I yawned and wound the window down some more. For me, playing footy would never be the same. Here in Coghill, it would just be something to fill in the time. The endless, endless time. Harvey says the strong part of Rory's game is being able to read the play. I think you'll be a good pair. I can see a real partnership developing there. Had Dad and I been at the same footy trials? It'll be good for you, Tommy. Pep you up a bit. You'll see. It's in your blood. I watched the sun sinking lower in the sky before disappearing altogether. There was nothing in my blood. Nothing. I knew, because I could feel the emptiness pumping away in my veins. What do you reckon, son? Dad? Yes? I want to see Daniel this weekend. Silence. Okay, he finally answered. I was exhausted. Gran was fussing around the kitchen as one of her culinary disasters bubbled in the oven. Have you taken... Gran looked down at my feet. Oh, good boy, you've taken your boots off. The last thing I need is you traipsing dirt all through the house. I could feel my legs stiffening up. Brendan was right. I was unfit. I sat at the table and rubbed my calves. Dinner's ready, she called. Tom, you're going to have a shower? Later. Dinner, she called again. When mum used to call us for dinner, we sounded like a herd of buffalo charging through the house. Here it was answered with silence. Gran disappeared down the hall. She came back, shaking her head. Your father's with your mother. He says he'll eat later. Soggy meatloaf was the meal of the evening. Gran cut me an enormous piece. I gulped and watched the steam twist up from the centre like a whirligig. There we go. She pushed the plate to me. Where's Kylie? She'll be home soon. Gran covered the rest of the meatloaf in foil. Brendan's picking her up from Brianna's. She's working on some project over there. Sure, I thought. Swallow the other one. Kylie was up to something. That's probably why she was putting the crap on her eyes and spending ages on her hair. 
At least Brianna was keeping her trap shut. I still wasn't comfortable with her knowing, but maybe Kylie could trust her not to blab. Gran sat down with her dinner and gave a little cough. I'd been mashing the meatloaf around and hadn't eaten a mouthful. I guess it did look rude, but at least I was sitting at the table. No one else was. I took a deep breath and lifted the fork to my lips. She coughed again. Haven't you forgotten something? I put my fork down. I just couldn't get in step with life here. Sorry, I mumbled. That's all right, she whispered. How about you saying grace tonight? 